The enemy can move us with fear, calculations, anxiety. I mean, that whole first sentence. <laughs> um, calculations, constant worry about the future and fears that take away our peace. I think that's how the enemy has to work. And the Holy Father's saying, hey guys, like this is not God's will for us. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. This is real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Father Innocent, everybody. I'm Father PT. And I'm Father Angelus. When you did music, Father PT, did you ever introduce it like with a fun count? A three, two, one, Look. go. <laughs> no, never. I'm doing praise and worship. and <laughs> He's praising, bro. Yeah. He's not. <laughs> do you not, still do music a lot, Father PT? Not as much as I want to. Mm. And so, mm. yeah. well, there's, there's a desire there. Tell me about that. There is. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize this was a spiritual direction deployment. Um, just people desire more your priesthood for confessions and explosive yeah. the sacrament for holy hours as opposed to leading Playing praise music. and worship. Yeah. Yeah. But if there are times where I could do it, you can like I, play a song or something. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. I like it. Well, Mark Mary, what about you? Do you <laughs> <laughs> are you doing some praise and worship now these days? <laughs> You um, look at you, boy. <laughs> you know, I'm more behind the scenes. With You're more behind the scenes kind of guy. I appreciate that. I was just, I'm not going to share it on this platform, but I was recently reminded of a nickname Father Stephen gave me in seminary having to do with the music producing, which I, was really funny. I don't remember that nickname. But. By the way, we do have new music finally coming out from Father Isaiah. It's coming. It'll be under the name Brother Isaiah. It's coming out in about two weeks. Okay. But the first song's you, coming out live in You two stayed weeks. with Brother Isaiah. That's great. For the, um, yeah, for the music stuff. A couple reasons behind that. Is this the first time in a long time? Welcome back. Were you here recently? Yeah. Was I, I think here the last think, time we I recorded? I think he's been here. Yeah, I've been okay. here. Sorry. Sorry. I missed we're, just used to your, we're just used to you not <laughs> yeah. being here. Well, Weird. <laughs> I, can I say this out loud? When I when I make fun of myself for not being here or not, somehow I've taken on this persona that I'm not really interested in doing the podcast. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But people will email me and say, no, no, we really like you being there. <laughs> we like you here too. We do have an, a, a, an audience who's sensitive to our, our needs and the things we say and they looking out for us. They feel bad yeah, for Yeah, they me. love you. Sometimes, you know, we like... This, sometimes this is a bit of a shtick, you know what I mean? And we kind of talk, yeah. say things a little bit more I dare, Just for the record, I do like being here. For effect. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and you you do play the victim pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like we like beat, we kind of like you, gang up on you and I don't need you. <laughs> I'm okay by myself. I have a controversial question for mm. this body. I have an it's, edgy answer. It's going to be great. It's Always. My answer is, is what set it off as edgy. Recently, uh, we... You know, I, I run some of our media, mm -hmm. as you guys all we do. are aware. We're, we're pretty aware of that. <laughs> pretty aware of that. You want to talk about Central? No, not, not here. And and <laughs> there's <laughs> one one governing body, which has some feedback, just pointed out that there weren't that many pictures of smiling friars. Things were like in prayer and things like that. We wanted some more smiling friars. Mm -hmm. To which internally, this is what I, this, <laughs> this is what I, this is what I thought. And I, I shared this with the, our communications board and they, strongly disagreed with me but i think it's because the context wasn't fully heard so here's the thing this is how <laughs> talk, we talk how, to us this is how we us. record stuff because we're going to keep living our lives so uh, you know whatever it is it's maybe twice or three times a year we have somebody come in with a camera is going to take some pictures do some video things like that um but it's just kind of like documentary style while we're living our life and the reality is the, I, the friars are known for being happy and joyful and things like that even happy and joyful people just don't smile that much most of, most of your life is actually lived, not even smiling. if you're happy. Not smiling. Not smiling. Like on this podcast, we're here. I think we're happy. I think so. I right? think. But do you <laughs> ever <laughs> tell your face? <laughs> my here, I think. <laughs> I think still ninety eight percent of the time, our face, our our mouth is not on a smile. So what I said is just like healthy people, even if they're happy, they just they don't smile. They just technically speaking. Of the amount of times that they're doing something, they just don't smile that often. Do you want to try to smile as much as we can on the podcast? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm saying healthy people. So do is there any? I share this with the board, and they were, they great, were like, great, "No, great time." They were very strong. Like, no, you guys smile all the time. I'm like, well, yes and no. Like we smile and we're happy and joke, mm -hmm. but still, 
Yeah, I, I wouldn't characterize friars or anybody in general as walking around with a perpetual smile. Correct. That's what you're saying, that people walk around with perpetual smiles. Or they don't. They don't. And so if right. you're trying to catch somebody smiling. If you're just normal, right. Right. normal life. Normal people, like you don't. Mm-hmm. But I would say, I don't know, disproportionately, we do laugh a lot during dinner, at least at our house. I don't know about. I think we do. <laughs> yeah, I, think I think we do too. Um, so there are sections of our lives that we are very joyful. But I wouldn't say like every single part of the day. I'm just trying to disagree with you because I really do agree with you. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out <laughs> which. Well, yeah, I would say because like a, a large portion of our day is sleeping. We're not we're not smiling. When You're we're not smiling, nor are we taking pictures. Right. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Amen. And um, and yeah, but there is, I guess, certain activities we do. We are more joyful. Other activities like when praying and which is like four or five hours of the day at least. It's uh, something where we don't know where they smile during. And so smiling is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Elf. Yeah. Okay. I was like, um, <laughs> I think effectively, like mm-hmm. our, on our face, like I think you would probably see friars like be more effectively like engaged, like their faces. So I don't, I'm trying to understand what they're trying to say. Cause smiling, like no one smiles all the time. But I was trying to I was trying to understand like what they're what they're like what what point they're making is that they want to see more joy do, do they want to see more like affect instead of just like you know what I mean like what are they what are they trying to capture? Because I think the joy is caught better on film as opposed to pictures. You know I mean, like you capture some sort of joyful event or something that happens. Part of it is it's just you know like yeah like kind of it's just that the you're not posing. The, right. the camera's not. When you're taking pictures, it's right. just not like a constant thing. Right. Yeah. So you got to get the moment. And usually mm-hmm. when we're taking cameras, we're not, they're taking pictures. We're not posing. We're like, we took a Christmas picture today and we were like, oh, you did today. We did finally. Oh, it's a little I still can't believe we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd y'all take That's how I feel about it. What'd you guys do for your Christmas picture? On the roof. Really? Rooftop blue sky. Well, how did you take the picture? Uh, one of, someone else did it. We had a visitor. Like on the roof? Like, so they were on the roof also? No. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Because we did ours on the roof also, OLA. Oh, well. But we had um, a drone. A drone. Of somebody, course you did. Somebody with a drone came out and took a picture. Did it turn out good? It's, it's going to be cool. I think so. Actually cool? Or like, like, really cool. Or like, do they get, catch people smiling? Well, the thing is, you could see us and you could kind of make out who we are. You could see Our Lady Guadalupe too. Oh, it's, it's that's cool. Wow, that's that's kind of cool. neat. It's kind of neat. And so, We're just yeah. a little late. So are there, we. I mean, we're going to do postcards. We're just going to have so to be quick. So are we. Quick. No Come magnets. On. Look at this. Like we we didn't do up. one, just so you know. Oh. Well, bro, you cannot like, not do one. What are you? What are you talking about? The Grinch? <laughs> what are you, the Grinch over here? <laughs> no, uh, maybe. <laughs> that's why I need some. Maybe. Some, yeah, that's, why some the, the that's why I need some yeah. backup became about this servant. whole smiling thing. Because oh, like, I'm like, not a trustworthy source. Sorry. Sorry, all those who are expecting Christmas cards from St. Leopold's. I just don't really believe in it. Send your donations to St. Joseph's instead. I you believe in animal. Christmas. <laughs> I just don't believe in all the to do about getting our taking Have you seen it's a wonderful a life? Please. Bro, it's okay. Forward. We'll take your donations. Anybody <laughs> planning on spending money to St. Leopold's, we'll take it. It seems. <laughs> Please fast forward through this. Hey, part. I just it threw a party painful. last night for one of our brothers. I heard that. Good for you, so, bro. You're thanks, so fun. Thanks bro. to none of you for attending. Oh, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So we're going oh. we're going to talk about St. Therese. <laughs> <laughs> So here's what's here's what's going on, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking through that one. <laughs> thanks for ha- smile. <laughs> thanks for giving me a platform where I can pick fights Vent. with people <laughs> mm-hmm. in a secondary manner um, <laughs> when they're not present. It's probably it's probably healthy. Um, <laughs> so here's what's going on. We're beginning a new year. As of actually, yes, when you're listening are. to this episode, you will have begun a new both liturgical year. And calendar year. Happy 2024. Happy feast day. Happy 2024. What's Happy the name of the calendar that we now use? Gregorian? I think so. What do um, you, what, do you, what is this? <laughs> Jeopardy? I, I like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start asking us questions, like obvious questions that we don't know the answer to, just to make us. But is that the right answer though? I think so. <laughs> okay. Just stretch ourselves. <laughs> All right, and so sorry about that. So the so again, big things coming up are we got <clears throat> the first song from Father Isaiah's new album, Mysteries and Medicines, Blind Man coming out in a couple of weeks. And um after Can you go back there? What's yes. the album called? Mysteries and Medicines. Sweet. And then the first song is called what? Blind Man. Sweet. What's the next song? The next song is <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the title. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say the title. This is a 
Um, <laughs> and then uh, we're going to be working on, so we're going to do three episodes here with St. Therese for the most part. Uh, the third one is loosely St. Therese and then um, inspired by, uh, but then we're going to use Father Jer- Jeremiah's book, which what's under your, there? it's called Sweet. Father Jeremiah CFR, Shrek, Mary in the Interior Life. So I think we're going to do, um, because of Lent coming up, we're going to at this point be able to do three episodes on that book. But if you want to check that out, again, Mary in the Interior Life by Father Jeremiah. All right, boys and girls. <laughs> Children of all ages. On October 15th, notice I'm no longer on the notes because I've been so deeply entrenched with this material. <laughs> I've assimilated it to myself. Uh, October 15th, which is the feast of St. Teresa of Avila. Okay. <laughs> Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, put on apostolic exhortation on St. Therese basically called the <clears throat> something in french but it means ready? like the confidence you can kind of <coughs> i don't know i'm gonna butcher it c'est la confiance Ooh, nice one thank you for up here mm. it, is, it is confidence that's what it's it is confidence is the name of it and um it's like third whatever with all the footnotes it's like 15 pages um the first sort of i don't know maybe six or seven are primarily St. Therese, and it is just so good. And I've just been using it and going back to it and traveling with it with me since it came out. So I'm very excited to do a couple episodes. And there's a reason that I, uh, Bishop Barron did something on it. I think maybe even Matt Frad did something on it. Abiding Together has done something on it. So it's just, I think it's it's resonated with a lot of people. And the next episode is, is going to really <clears throat> kind of get into some of the heart of it that has moved me the most. But what we're going to start here is just, I think, because it makes sense with the beginning of a new year and just kind of talking about how we can go into the year, the, the, the year uh, 2024 with, how do you say the confidence in French? C'est la confiance. That with that. <laughs> with that. You guys want to give it a shot? No. Nope. No. Come on. We need to, we're I trying to. So much respect for th- the people of God, <laughs> yeah. the, the people of God are in their car doing their laundry right now, and they've been told they need to smile more for the camera. I'm smiling. I say, think I think if you say it in French, you'll get some smiles. <laughs> do it if he says it. You say it again. Oh my gosh! Do it for the gram. Uh, c'est la confiance. C'est la confiance. Probably, that was pretty wow. good. Wow! Uh, that was very good. I'm probably butchering it too. C'est so. la confiance. You guys are so good for the, for the Francois <laughs> here good. with a smile. With a smile, everyone. So here is what. It's really good. <clears throat> here's here's what you keep saying. That. Our holy, I feel that way. But here's what our Holy Father says. These are first his words, and then I'll I'll tell you when we go into Saint Teresa's words. This is paragraph twenty four. The complete confidence that becomes an abandonment in love sets us free from obsessive calculations, constant worry about the future, and fears that take away our peace. In her final days, Therese insisted on this, and now we get to Saint Teresa's quote. We who run in the way of love shouldn't be thinking of suffering that can take place in the future. It's a lack lack of confidence. And then back to our Holy Father's words. If we are in the hands of a father who loves us without limits, this will be the case come what may. We will be able to move beyond whatever may happen to us. And in one way or another, his plan of love and fullness will come to fulfillment in our lives. And so back again, St. Teresa's words. We who run in the way of love shouldn't be thinking of suffering that can take place in the future. It, it's a lack of confidence. And so, right, like the, the invitation from St. Therese and, and from our Lord is to have confidence in him. And what she's kind of saying in sort of this, this velvety hammer kind of way, this sort of nice hammer is just like, that's just, let's just call it what it is. That worry is just lack of confidence. And it's something that actually, uh, insofar as it had, and it's a spiritual expression, right? Like we just want to repent of that. And to, with God's grace, return to sort of the present moment, um, and to be in a relationship with Him, with confidence, and in, and and having confidence again, this radical hope of what He will do in the time to come. So um, now we can. Any comments from the <laughs> the peanut gallery? I I too am, am a huge fan of this document. Um, I've been reading over some of the postulants and. There's just so much good there. So I'm, I'm, this is awesome. We're, do, we're, we're working on it. We're working through it. <clears throat> um, what I was struck by 
is that how important it is for our own personal lives, but also uh, for our audience. Because I think when we, when I say this term, like when we're, you know, this, this podcast is probably for the most part, like we're, we're talking to converted people, right? So people who've had an experience of Jesus, I mean, in, in all different kinds of, uh, like the spectrum of those who, and, and ages and life experience. But for a lot of us, we've kind of, we've said yes to Jesus. We want to be disciples. And, and I think it's just important to note that like, there's a lot of, our, our audience, I think appreciates a, a lot of the the stuff, or hopefully appreciates a lot of stuff we offer them. But it, when we talk about converted people or disciples, the enemy is often like you, you what the enemy um, attacks us in different ways. And it's not all often, it's not anymore like you, like mortal sin to mortal sin or like a full frontal attack. Like we're, it, it doesn't, like that doesn't work often anymore. And we, we've been disciples and converted for a period of time. So what the enemy has to do is he has to be more subtle. <clears throat> And I think what's so incredible about this this document in St. Therese is that I think sometimes it, it's just so good for us to be open and move that the enemy can move us with fear, calculations, anxiety. I mean, that whole first sentence. <laughs> um, calculations, constant worry about the future and fears that take away our peace. I think that's how the enemy has to work. And the Holy Father is saying, hey, guys, like this is not God's will for us. Like we don't have to live in this place. And so I think we're kind of calling the subtlety out and saying, hey, like even in these places, we're not struggling with huge sins anymore or we're, we're, we're a lot of us are already all in for the gospel or we wanna be. But now the Holy Father's inviting us to look at all these places where we might give in to anxiety and fear and calculations, a lack of peace. And I think he wants to convert those places. Um, so I'm excited about this because I need this in my own life. Like I worry about a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and Jesus is like, "No, I want, I want that place." Um, and I, I, He wants to call out the subtleties because He wants us to believe and have confidence in the way the Father loves us constantly, in our past, our present, and our future. And so He's just calling out the subtleties, and I think it, it can bring us to deeper conversion. Yeah, and I think it's part and parcel with who she is, right? The child. Uh, Saint Teresa, the child Jesus of the Holy and the Holy Face. face yeah. yeah, I didn't realize that her title was and the Holy Face. I thought it was of the Holy Face, which makes sense. But um, she's just childlike before the Lord and childlike in the arms of the Father, where a child doesn't obsess about the future. A child doesn't worry with calculating thoughts about what's going to happen next. They don't worry like, oh my gosh, when's dinner going to be? Or what am I going to eat? Because they're cared for. And I think this speaks to her it's just to the genius and to the yeah to the genius of saint therese but even more so just to her her sanctity and how she desires to be totally cared for by the father and i think that's available to us obviously through the intercession of saint therese by her example but also to just just having that confidence as she talks about where we're able to just to yeah easily lay back into the arms of our father and and as you're saying, Father Innocent, like it, it's subtle the way in which the evil one moves us off of that place where we're resting in the Father, where if we find ourselves always obsessing about like things in the future and we don't experience peace, like like what is that? Do I not trust that God's going to provide for me? Or if it's even in my prayer where like I'm distracted by things in the future or things in the past, like can I just remain present with the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and what they desire to do with me in this place? And I think once again, that's where Therese would say, um, that's where we can be confident in the love that God has for us specifically in this moment. But even more so, I think it just shatters all the different false perceptions and the false realities that we kind of hold important. Uh, because yeah, once again, anxieties come from these these things that aren't real. Um, they are expectations, but then at the same time, they they create this <laughs> yeah just negative um, negative way of us living out of these places. And so. Yeah, this is great as, as far as us talking about this, but even more so, I think just this allows us just to tap into that that well of of Saint Therese and her genius and the sanctity that she has, because I think obviously friends are the saints are our friends, or hopefully they are right, and so it's beautiful how the Lord just yeah emphasizes certain aspects of His heart through a saint, and we're able to, if you will, gain access to His heart through the saint, uh, where there's graces that she pours out, and so and she desires to do. Like her, whatever. What's the line? She desires to do God's spend, will. Yes, that's that's good. She does desire to do God's in will in heaven. The whole <clears throat> I, I'll, right. I'll spend my heaven doing 
good good works on earth, yeah. right? Yep. And so let's take her literally at that. I mean, <laughs> and I'm going to cash in and money. Her help. Come on. <laughs> you know, like, hey, you want to do good works on earth? Why don't you help me stay in the yeah. present moment? You yeah. know, um, or why don't you help me just in this Ooh, little nice way? One. See, yeah, do God's will, huh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but why don't you help me, like Therese, help me just to remain yeah, focused on the Father just as you were, um, just to help me do that little thing so that way I can promote, if you will, your heart, but even more so Jesus's heart. And so beautiful, just to, to rest there in the arms of the Father. That sounds nice. <laughs> um, I have a few things to say. Number one. Number one. Just, I mean, I think we entering the new year, I think there's just a lot of games that can be played. And I think everybody kind of gets into this space of like, oh, it's a new year. I'm trying to do something. What should I do? Should I fast? Should I lose weight? Should I try something you, different? And I need to lose weight. Um, I'm just, all, I'm just all the above uh, okay. for you. <laughs> but just to, just to call it out, like we, we face the new year and we face the idea of wanting to kind of like, uh, we don't need to improve necessarily. We don't need to get better. We don't need to be better, you know, um, in the worldly sense, right? But we look at the new year in a different way. And what does that mean? In what way can I, can I, um, yeah, have a deeper conversion? What, what way can I become more free this year? What way can I remove obstacles in my life um, that, that <clears throat> keep me from a deeper relationship with the Lord or keep me from deeper prayer, right? So we just, we face it differently and we're not gonna just do things for the sake of doing things. We're not gonna like sign up for things. We're not gonna like try things. We're not gonna like get busy about things. We're not gonna seek to be perfect. And like everybody wants the perfect strategy. If, okay, if I just do this this year, then things are gonna be different, right? So catch yourself doing, like if you get into that frenzy, that's not what is is gonna be helpful to anyone, right? So a gentle calling out there. We don't play the new year like everybody plays the new year. Mm. <laughs> And uh, we, we could talk about that a little bit, but just the, the point is just like catch yourself controlling the new year, catch yourself saying, okay, this is my plan or my strategy or my recipe for the new year. It's, Therese didn't have a recipe. This is the whole point. Her point was to be simple before the Lord, be childlike before the Lord. The, the, uh, when you're a kid before the Lord or before even for, for life, before your parents, it's, you don't get to set the agenda. You know, get the set that like the reality of just like, okay, this is what we're going to do today. You know, I always had this funny thought of like my sister and all her kids, like, and then one of like the five-year-old comes in and, and says, okay, mom, do we need to pay the bills today? Like, what? What are you talking about? Go and play. Or, uh, you know, and there's like, hey, mom, like, what do we have for dinner? Can I help? I'm like, no, you're three, chill. Right. But we, but we can get kind of all caught up in this reality of just like ne needing to act too grown up or needing to be too perfect or too responsible. Um, and so just to consider that, is that our posture for the new year? That to do it on our own, to be in control. Um, when St. Therese, the Holy Father, is this proposal of just being little and, and being cared for and being provided for in God's providence. Number one. Number two. Wow. <laughs> oh, do you have, no, 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 no. I'm just number two. Uh, marveling at you. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. Uh, I totally <laughs> forgot number two. Oh, no. <laughs> Here, let me, let me wow. add a, I'm going to oh, add, wow. add some. I'm just going to say something and, and then I'll send it back to okay. you on that. Is I, for, me, you remember. for me, that little thing works of like, bro, you're three, chill. I don't know if that works like for every listener. Like, hey, you're starting to like overthink things. Like, sis, you're three, chill. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, like, you're just, hey, you're, just, I'm just a little guy. Just chill out. You're just a little girl. Chill out. Anyway, so that can make sense for me. Did Nothing. that give you time to think of it? Mm, nope. Okay. I lost it. Do you? Were there more? Nope. Like, I, I'm real. That was really nice setup. You were very yeah. confident. I'm yeah. it's really unfortunate. You forgot, I'm sorry. <laughs> you forgot the did second I, thing. Did I distract you? <laughs> nope. Okay. I don't know. I just maybe you just got into. It. I didn't plan on going that long on the first point. <laughs> You're like, I'll bring it back up. I'm, I'm cooking. Chill. I'm cooking. Do I need to comment on that? I'm not necessarily telling everybody to chill out. But no, but I think, to, I mean, I like, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that that actually works for me. Oh, okay. But also saying that what works for me doesn't always work for. Yeah, I can recognize that. But I, I do think that a free, this is kind of be a refreshing conversation. Just like, oh, wow, we can enter this new space and challenge ourselves a little bit to, to be simple. And, and not to have to play a game that everybody else plays. Yeah, I, I do think it's helpful just to clarify roles, um, meaning like I'm not going to take the place of God and I'm just going to be however old I am in the eyes of the Father, right? I'm just going to be a kid. I'm going to let him provide for me for everything. I remember one of the most helpful conversations I had when I was in high school on a basketball team. The coach called us in one by one and, and let us know our roles on the team. I'll be vulnerable here. And, yeah, uh, come on. <laughs> and so uh, I was like the next guy in or whatever in the, in the list. And uh, I was expecting starter, 
whatever it is. And he says, hey, we're going to ask you just to kind of keep things lively during practice. Oh, no. I said, excuse me? You just laughed. You're supposed to laugh. You're supposed to be telling the story. You're supposed to receive him, bro. I said, oh, that must have been hard. I'm sorry about that. Like lively during practice and then and then start, right, coach? He goes, no, no, no. You're not, you're not going to get any playing time this year. You're just going to be on the bench. And, you know, you have a good energy about yourself. You work hard during practice. But just uh, be a, a hustle guy. Hustle guy. So <laughs> let me just clarify this. I'm not going to start or get any playing time. Probably not. But hustle it, guy. But it was freeing because I knew my role. And I just knew it was like, okay, I don't have to, not to say I never aspired to start it or start or whatever like, but it was pretty clear. Like I could do what I was supposed to do well. And, um, and I would, okay, the coach is depending on me to make things lively during practice or like wrestling for, for loose balls, <laughs> grabbing. No, I'll forget. I was just make a Draymond green joke, but I won't. Um, but it is something I think once again, bringing it back to St. Therese, if we're just able to rest in the place where we're supposed to be, as opposed to grasping and reaching to place. And this is something consistent with us. Um, as far as like being grown up when God's just like, I just want to provide for you. Like you're my daughter or you're my son and don't worry, I'll take care of you. And it's tough because it takes this abandonment, a uh, holy abandonment that the Holy Father brings up about St. Therese, that she's just abandoned to whatever the Father wants to do in her heart, in her life. And it's not easy and we're not proposing that it's easy, but with her help, but even more so, just I think having this recognition that I am three years old or I am five years old, hopefully that does free us up a little bit more just to kind of step into this. Good news. Yes. Number two. First of all, <laughs> that was a great point. <laughs> Receive that. I, I feel with you. I'm sorry you rejected by your coach. <laughs> it's okay. Hustle. Really I like hustle. the hustle guy, though. I like that. Um, don't forget. The I don't really... Can, do you want to talk into the microphone? I don't really know <laughs> why. Uh, Trez of the Holy Face. Right? Is that what we, we just said? Like her her Something, title yeah. is, is of the Holy Face. Like I just it, of the Child Jesus of the and, Child and, Jesus and the Holy Face and the Holy, Holy Face. Face. Um. So, just to the, that perspective is helpful. Like when we want to be little, and the reason we can enter into this space of, like, she is not necessarily the example. Like she's looking at Jesus, hmm. like of the Child Jesus of the Holy Face. Like she's gazing upon Jesus doing all these things. Like Jesus is the one who's who's childlike. And, and humble and, and um, poor before the father. And this is how Jesus lived his life. And so whether he was, you know, in Bethlehem or at Nazareth or in, even in his adult life, he's the one that's constantly living the perspective that we desire in this new year, right? So the gift of, of her living in this particular way is, is should point us like all the saints point us. And I know we know this, but just she is constantly gazing upon the Lord. Like that's what, I mean, the, the reality of Carmel, the reality of her life there. And, and so you, and then you put her titles together and you're like, yeah, she just sees Jesus doing this. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus is experienced and, and we can look upon him in the gospels. We can look upon him and any experience we have in prayers. Like he's always doing this, being little and needy and trusting and of, of God who's always going to provide for him. And he doesn't have to do it himself. Right. Um, and so anyway, that was the, just a, she's looking upon the Lord and we're looking at her, but we just, that. We just can't forget that that's that that's the reason why this is fruitful for her is because he's utterly always gazing upon the Lord and watching him what doing what he does. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is guys, we're not this is not a posture of like, okay, like if this works for you, mm -hmm. like remember, this is the gospel. Unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. This is not something that again that we just wow, guys, like it worked for St. Therese, it might work for you. It's actually the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right. So that challenges us, right? You're like, whoa, I have to become it is, it you have to become like a little child, right? And then I'm also going to be vulnerable. I'm talking about recent confession. I mean, and it, this is really, um, this is, this was just really helpful for me because I think it's, it is about posture and it is about just recognizing that what we're not saying is, that, again, this is magic. Like if I just become little, then, then all my fears, my anxieties, all these things will just go away. And so I was going to confession and, and I was just, um, this, it, yeah. Anyway, it was just just beautiful priest that. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. You're no longer. Uh, it wasn't actually. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> um, you are my regular confessor, but it wasn't. Yeah. Um, so I was just bringing some 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 real difficulties and, and struggles, and I, I was feeling it, and I was kind of discouraged, and and the the priest was just so beautiful because he's like, you know, what, Father, here's the image I have for you as you as you share your heart with me. I feel like there's a crack between you and Jesus. And you in, in the crack there, you see, you're looking down at this crack and you feel separated from Jesus and you see the anxiety and, and the struggle and you see discouragement and you see um, 
yeah, some sadness or confusion you see and you're looking down at this. He's like, I think I'm just gonna invite you to look up and look at Jesus and step over the crack, right? You've been focused on this crack and, you're, and, and everything that, that kind of keeps you from Jesus. I'm just gonna invite you, you know, again, it's just like a little kid, look at the, he, and it was beautiful. He's like, look at the face of Jesus and just step over this separation. Right? And I was like, it was just a word from the Lord because then I could look at his face and I, the crack didn't like disappear or the separation didn't like, oh, it's all better now. But I, because I looked at Jesus and I was just little and poor, I didn't have to figure it out myself. Like I, Jesus just took my hand and I stepped over the crack and it, and it, I just felt like I was with him. Right? So it is something beautiful. I think it, it is, it can be simple. It's not, we're not going for perfection. We're not going for fixing everything, but with, with the presence of Jesus and with his face looking back at us, I can step over or at least have enough confidence and trust and, and courage to, to say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like fall down in this crack. I'm not going to let it take over, but I'm going to, I'm going to look at Jesus and he's going to, he's just going to like, you know, take my hand and let me step over it. Right. So it, it, I think it's about perspective. Confidence has to do with perspective. I'm not having confidence in myself. I'm not looking at the darkness or the struggle, but I'm gonna look at Jesus because confidence is in a person. Mm. It's not in a, like in anything else. And when I look at Jesus, I can do that. Um, so anyway, I, I thought it was, it was at least powerful for me. <laughs> that's great. I think that's confidence is, what was the line there? Confidence is in a person? Yeah, it's not in, you're not, it's not in yourself or not anything else. It's in a person. So when I see Jesus, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And you might have to step over the crack 20 times a day and that's okay. Like it's, that's better than falling in it or getting consumed or get, getting stuck or yeah. afraid. <laughs> Great. Um, so a couple of comments, if I might <laughs> say <laughs> something. Participate. Do you have any no. more points you want to make? <laughs> <laughs> so going forward, I'm going to need you on. <laughs> so you're on drinks. Okay. <laughs> you're on. Um, Nothing. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the coach, though, buddy. I'm gonna need you to hustle. <laughs> I'm a hustler. I'm, a, I'm, a role, I'm well, certainly a role player. Charlie totally hustle very right. happy about that. Role. <laughs> those are those are my favorite awards. Junior high, seventh, eighth grade, most inspirational award, <laughs> which is <laughs> given to the. There are only like three awards given. Like I MVP, was MVP, like, Go ahead. It was MVP, most improved, and then most inspirational. I was just I was just a little guy, but I'll just. Throwing my body everywhere. Yeah. Diving yeah, on you stuff. You still do. What were you? I was going to say in the yearbook, I was most likely to be a priest. Oh, that that's was interesting. My thing. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> I was the best smelling senior. Thank you. <laughs> is that true? I was wow. always, I've always been clean. I mean, I didn't actually win any of the senior. This is like junior high I'm talking about. I didn't have um, win any I didn't win any senior of either. Hmm. Just so you know, I feel like I'm Steve Kerr a little bit. I come off the bench and I can hit some big shots, but not normally. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> not. No. I mean, Steve Kerr was a very good shooter, though. I know, but yeah, he didn't. Yeah. I don't think. Did he start? I don't think he started. Uh, at some point, he did. Yeah, but I, I feel like Steve Kerr on the bull. If we're on the Bulls, I feel like well, like Tony hey, Kukoc or something. Kukoc. What were your comments you wanted to make? <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going. Last dance. Come on. All right. That was funny. See, that's what did I tell you that you're on humor. <laughs> no, he said I was on drinks. You're on clock. Look, come on, you're let's on, go. Okay. Um, a couple of things. I think just to make a clarification, which I think we actually haven't been running into an issue with, right? Is yeah, you know, like like Father Innocent said, like, the Jesus, the Jesus, Jesus, the Lord says, right? Don't worry about tomorrow. You know, so it is this sort of it is actually command of the Lord to sort mm -hmm. of have confidence and live in the present moment. Also, we understand that, right? Not uh, uh, we're not um, dismissing by any stretch of the imagination, all anxiety is just having a supernatural, like you just need to pray Absolutely. more. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not at all what we're saying. Um, there's other <laughs> factors at play there, but certainly if we catch ourselves in this place, if we have, we're, we, you know, of this obsessive calculations, worrying about the future where we can, especially um, like we just want to bring these to the Lord and find our peace and our confidence in him. Um, the second is, uh, Sorry about just breathing on this microphone. Um, like, you know, another example of this, certainly I think where it comes up quite often is, is I'm speaking with somebody and things are going well. Maybe things are going well in a relationship. Things are going well in vocation. Things are going well with prayer. And um, and then the, the thought comes in of like, okay, but like, like well, okay, I know something bad's going to happen soon. You know, like, uh, and instead of just sort of having peace and sort of enjoy, finding rest in, like the, mm. the good thing that's happening, we kind of, 
it's maybe it's a defense mechanism or whatever it is. We start thinking about like what's going to go wrong when it's going to go wrong. It's like, wait, hold on. Let's just stay here. Stay in this present moment. Don't start worrying and making calculations about, you know, the future. Let's just, yeah, find rest in the good thing God's doing here now or find rest in the relationship where it is here now. Um, yeah, there's no guarantee that tomorrow's going to be like really hard. So like tomorrow might be awesome. You know, so if, if today's awesome, just let today be awesome and then receive tomorrow as the Lord brings it. And then just, I guess, a point is, I, I think I introduced it a little bit on the, the episode we did about like the, the uh, from gratitude to greed or greed to gratitude, grat- greed to gratitude, right? The idea of that, you know, um, the person who starts to struggle with greed is you, you focus on what you don't have. The person who kind of experiences an overflowing mm-hmm. of gratitude, you focus what you do have. And just the, this concept, and and I don't know if it'll become a bigger thing, but it's just kind of been something I've been wrestling with or just looking at is the ways in which what actually gets us in trouble with the interior experience uh, begins with just us not focusing where we're supposed to focus. And and this is the thing, right? Instead of we get in trouble and we have this experience of of anxiety and worry and all of, but all kind of about things that we don't have control over because we just don't have control over the future. And so we get this kind of frustration and angst. But it's because, right, we're thinking about and we're focusing on the future and not just the present. And and particularly, uh, to go back to what Father Anna said, not just being keeping our focus on the Lord first and foremost and, and just finding our confidence in the person as opposed to sort of our plan for what our six-month plan, two-year plan, something like that. Can I tell a quick story? Yes, please. Um, just to, to, for your point, recently I was traveling in um, – kind of like probably more so kind of caught up in my own like okay i i'm on this trip i got to give this talk and i got to do just like caught up in like in the actual travel day of, of all that stuff and the uh the, the gentleman behind me was our age and he got a call when we landed that his dad died mm. and he was on his way to see his dad and there was this there was this moment where i was like i should really probably reach out like see if he's okay because he was crying on the plane and, um, but as I was getting off the plane, I was like thinking about my ride and like, just all again, kind of part of my brain or part of my heart was like, I got to find this guy. The other part of my heart was like, I got to I got to go. Like there's things to do. I got to be somewhere tonight kind of thing. And so he kind of, he kind of like secluded himself <laughs> when he got off the plane. And so that gave me permission to be like, okay, I tried, which is super funny. Cause I didn't really try, but like, I, you know, um, so anyway, my ride was late providentially. I went to the restroom, came back. The whole airport was empty, but this guy was in the corner on the ground weeping. And guys, it was like a real moment of grace because it, it became this, like, I'm so caught up, but my life became really small then. And it was just me and this guy in the, like seemingly in the entire airport. So I just went next, I went and sat next next to him and he told me about his dad. We prayed together. I gave him one of Brother Colby's rosary. And it was just like this beautiful moment where life, I like I experienced Jesus saying, this is all that matters. This is all that matters. And so to your point, it was so beautiful. And I, I've been like, I've been telling that story. I've been praying through that story and just recognizing that like the Lord was like, hey, you're not that big of a deal. Like, don't worry about the future. Don't worry about your talk tomorrow. Don't worry about all the people you got to meet with. Don't worry. And it was just awesome. And there was like a grace in the moment to be like, this is exactly where the Lord wants me. And it was just awesome, right? And so I, I, it was like a conversion almost. Like I, part of me was just like, I, I don't have time for this. And then the Lord opened that up and I was like, I was convicted and I had to repent. I was like, oh Lord, this is all you wanted. Um, so life became really small. And I think, no pun intended, but like the idea of just like, this is what we want. Like we thinking and concerned about other things, but somehow God breaks through there. And it was a real beautiful moment of grace. I know we don't want to be too timely, but we recently celebrated um, the the gift of uh, the Sunday of Christ the King at the end of the year, and um, and I'm just like always moved by that because it's like Christ King of the King of the Universe, you know? It, it's just pretty awesome, and and um, and so I'm, I'm moved, right? Because Father Mark Mayer, you're you have a great, I mean, and appreciate your pastoral kind of fatherly heart. There is that like we're not dismissing real anxiety and real struggles. Um, if information, I think I say at least every day, if not weekly, that like w- spiritual bypassing is not allowed. <laughs> like your human heart before the Lord is is like is, is vital. We have to feel and experience everything that's going on. But in that place of feeling and and experience our humanity, that's when Jesus can be Lord. 
that's can that's when he can be king of the universe so this line that it if we are in the hands of a father who loves us without limits right the trinity and and let me just say like jesus is he is the king of the universe he is he is lord right and so the, if that's true then it just affects the way we live and affects the way we have this confidence right so yes we need to deal with our anxiety and the gift of what the church offers and 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 the formation of our humanity and and counseling and healing and all those things yes the lord opens those spaces but at the end of the day jesus wants to meet us as the lord of our life and he has to be the lord of our anxiety and it's from that place then we can go to counseling and we can we can do healing but we sometimes i don't i think i've i've struggled a bit and cuz one of my many blind spots is that I oversimplify. And I'm like, all right, well, like, let's just do counseling. Let's just like read this book on healing and it's going to be fine. Or, you know, like these human formation things, but Jesus is Lord, right? And he's our confidence. Like we have to have our confidence in him and then he can prepare the way for us to mm. experience healing, mm. right? And he can do that however he wants. I, someone can pray over me and be healed, or I can go to counseling and be healed, or I can take medication for my anxiety and be healed. Jesus can do whatever he wants. But I think Therese has this incredible childlike way just to know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they they are the Lord. He is Lord. God is the Lord of my life. Um, so I think it's just it, it's beautiful because we we want to go all in for the, like being reverent for our humanity, but Jesus comes to us and, and and proclaims his lordship. And I think that's also just good to know like what does that mean for us in our in our struggle. It's funny you brought up King of the Universe. I was gonna bring it up. But thank you. Mm -hmm. um, another aspect to Levi Maricakis talks about this, the OG, <laughs> that like Christ's kingship is obviously different than normal kingship because the authority that he has is exemplified in his kenosis and his pouring out and giving up everything of himself back to the Father. And that's where the authority comes from because the gospel passage yesterday uh, was the, you did it, you did it to me. You yeah. And Matthew so 25. Matthew 25, thank you. And so it's beautiful because that's the way, if the king lives that way, Jesus, that's the way he'd like his, his sons and daughters to live also. And so there's a real way in which we can, seeing how Jesus pours everything back to the father, we can do the same thing with ourselves. And right, like just looking at Jesus' life, there was a moment where he was in the garden of Gethsemane. There was a moment he was suffering. There was a moment he was, he was, worried about what's going to happen but what he said simply was father like if this is your will let it be but if not or if this cup passes me by let it be and if not um let it be your will however he said it i'm sorry i'm butchering that Thank you, bro. No, you but yeah it. you're doing great bro thanks i appreciate the confidence and so <laughs> good word oh, nice one that. i like that but um but to say and father listen to your point just that place of intimacy that we can be vulnerable before the lord um has been done by jesus because he knew who he was in the eyes of the father in the same way too, we can know who we are in the eyes of the father, like his beloved, his little ones. And it's not that with this whole act of confidence, it's like laissez-faire, like whatever happens, happens. And so I'm just gonna live my life in this frivolous and free way and yeah, God, whatever. Um, but no, it's it's conversely like this confidence that like my father has me and like he's gonna care for me so much so that his plans, his plan of love and fullness will come to fulfillment in our lives. Maybe not my time, but in his time, maybe not in the way that I desire, but in the way that he desires. And once again, it is it's painful and tough to have to, to allow that control that we desire to have to be wrestled out of our hands. But it's also beautiful and freeing because then we're allowing God to be God, but even more so we're operating in that way in which Jesus also freely gave it back to the Father. Um, because if it's good for Jesus, it's good for us. And mm -hmm. so it should be something that we desire to pour ourselves out in this way, specifically in the confidence of our Father. Thank you, Father Pierre Toussaint. You're welcome. Um, that, that made me want to say something. But this is a, there's a funny thing. This is a funny note. Is that in the world right now, uh, there's like this, there's a tension of how soon you can celebrate Christmas. Mm. And like if people start to do things before Thanksgiving, it's like, is that too soon? But there's this debate because people want to start, they're, they're leaning is towards celebrating it too soon. We are right now, we decided we're going to talk about so Christ the King is the week of Thanksgiving. So we're talking about, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christ the King 
after Christmas. And after <laughs> New Year. Yeah. That's how we do things at the Poco Poco podcast. <laughs> I got something else to say about that. Could, if, I have some, I, that, I, I'll, I'll go after you because it brought up a it brought up something that I wanted to share, but I didn't want to share it because if it, if we weren't going to say that we we're recording this on Thanksgiving, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, no, it's fine. I think it's better. I think this is just you know this is the nature of hey, we live different lives than everybody else. You know what I mean? Um, is so I was at my spiritual director's. I was on retreat for Thanksgiving. I got there Wednesday night. Thanksgiving's Thursday. Got there Wednesday night, and like because he's out of Paris, there's all this stuff that had been already donated, like it's like all these like sweets and cookies or whatever. And so and and the way it works is when when I'm staying there is just like here whatever you know help yourself kind of thing, and and they're not like doting on us or, or whatever. But um, so you know you don't go till like the next day. I think they went to Thanksgiving. <laughs> lunch at his, his family's house like at one or two o'clock the next day so at some point that day i you know was in the fridge and i saw some like pecan pie and so i mm. cut myself a little slice of the pie Sweet. and then you know about two hours later i go back and look and i see that when he went to his family's house <laughs> he had left everything else but took the pie <laughs> So I oh. <laughs> took a piece. <laughs> so he's showing up to his parents' Thanksgiving thing <laughs> with the with pie. The <laughs> pie. There's gonna be a big old slice missing from it. Oh, so that was really embarrassing. And then when he came home and brought leftovers, I just didn't touch anything because I was too afraid. To <laughs> somebody else on Thanksgiving. But um, just the, this kind of touching on what Father PT said and Father Angelus, so we can maybe bring it in for a close. Is right. This also doesn't there there's also an appropriate way to have a plan you know what i mean that's that's not what we're saying right it's just that like this means we're gonna live this sort of like passive or yeah this sort of like go with the wind and whatever happens happens type of thing it's important and to have a healthy plan and structures and things like that um but but it's like you get in trouble like when it becomes this excessive calculation and particularly when um the anxiety and stuff wells up because again we're putting our we're trying to put our confidence in ourselves our plans our ability to plan for and control the future as opposed to first and foremost like all of it being founded upon again our our trust in in him and and that's um that's just yeah where the the source and the foundation has to remain that's great um just like not not worrying, not being anxious about tomorrow, like and and thinking about the new year, things I want to improve in or things I want to to get better at, like, um, to the to the point of like being in January now, technically, but just have having celebrated Christ the King. It's like it's an authority question, like what looking at this new year, what parts of my life are under the authority of Jesus, and what parts of my life are not. And and to, if you want to have a New Year's resolution, like. What if we made it around authority? Like, where is where is Jesus have authority? Like, does he have authority over over my anxiety? Does he have authority over my fear? Does he have authority over my schedule? Does he have authority over over the things that I my dreams? Like, what do I want to do this year? Like, just dreaming, which is always fun. Like, like what do I want to do in this new year? Um, does he have authority over my use of technology? Does he have authority over my computer and my phone? Does he have authority over my sleep? Does he have authority over my exercise? Does he have, because we want to. But if it's my authority, then it's that it's my project, and that's where we want to shift it. Is like, but does he have authority over it? And if he has authority over it, then what does he say about it? If he has authority over it, then what is it? What does it mean for my time? What does it mean for my priorities? Right. And so, and there are parts of our hearts and us sitting around this table included that God still doesn't have access to, and we all know those places. Maybe it's our shame. Maybe it's our sin. Maybe it's our brokenness. Maybe there's still parts of our past we have not given him authority over. Brothers and sisters, he wants to reign in your life. So what what, what percentage of your life does he actually reign over right now? And if we're gonna, if we want to do something for the new year, the, the go for it attitude is, Lord, I want you to have complete access and full reign over every part of me. Every part of my life, every part of my story, every part of my brokenness, every part of my sin, all of my dreams, all of my future. Lord, I want you to have authority and I want you to be the king of all those things. Right. And but it's it takes takes humility and it takes courage to to actually open that space and be like, wow, like, and just me, I'll speak for me personally. There are parts of my life that I'd rather close off and not show him and not give him access to or authority to. I wonder in the new year if we all can have this like <laughs> I was gonna say come to Jesus moment, but literally like a moment to be humbled before him and say, okay, Lord, I'll give you these things. Wow. Could you imagine a new year where we get after it in that way rather than just the normal stuff that, that we might just be concerned about, but Lord, what places do you want to have more authority in my life? And I want to give those to you.
Amen. 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 Father Angelus, can you close us with a prayer? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Lord, we do praise you and adore you and are so grateful for the gift of this new year. Lord, we thank you where we find ourselves right this very moment. We thank you for the joys and the peace you've given us, but also, Lord, we're just grateful even for the challenges and the sorrows. And right in this moment, Lord, you come to meet us. And so we just beg you to come. We give you permission and we entrust to you um, deeper desire and surrender to have you come and be the Lord of our lives. Thank you also, Lord, for in your gaze and your love upon us, you allow us to be uh, simple and little and small and humble before you. Just come and take care of us, Lord, in this new year. Come and do the work for us. Come and provide for us. Reveal the goodness of your Father who's caring for us at every moment. Give us courage right now, Jesus, to give you deeper access to places in our hearts and stories that need more of you. And in this new year, Lord, we want to hold nothing back from you. Thank you for the inter intercession of St. Therese who reveals to, to us what the joy of being little and cared for and childlike. And give us the grace this new year not to worry about tomorrow and to enjoy being your sons and daughters today. We pray this all, Jesus, in your name. Amen. 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 The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks for all of our benefactors for continuing to make this possible. Happy New Year. Thanks, St. Therese, for praying for us. And again, uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks, we'll be getting into Father Jeremiah's book, Mary in the Interior Life. Get it. So not next week, not the weeks after that, but the week following. Paraclete Press. Paraclete Press. And Blind Man coming out soon. Bye, friends. Peace, y'all. Peace. Peace. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know 